What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Move Better channel. This is John Peña Serrata, and we got Dr. Joe in the house again. And today, we want to talk about the different myths about mobility. The, the biggest myth in mobility is that you have to stretch in order to gain mobility. Right. And that's just, that's just not true. It's part of it, but it's, it's not. It's been part of it, but you understand that mobility is control around a joint, not the length that you can, uh, you can push your tissues to. Flexibility is great, but we really want more mobility in, in our lifestyle, right? We want to be able to control our joints, not just overly stretch our joints. Now, can you know, yoga be a, a mobility um, uh, exercise? Absolutely. Yes. People think that yoga is just a stretching component Nope. and that they, they just work through stretching. So people go, oh, can I just do yoga to work on mobi my mobility? Absolutely. Stretching or mobility is great with yoga because you're doing a stability aspect. You're creating tension within a muscle. Of course, you're just, there's a lot of it that, and I know there's new classes out there nowadays, but a lot of the yoga is working through range of motion mm -hmm. and trying to get one side lengthened while contracting another side. Yeah. Um, and so understand with flexibility, we are lengthening tissues, but at the same time, what's happening on the other side of that joint? It's shortening. It's shortening. Yeah. And so with mobility, we're trying to control all aspects of flexibility, uh, yeah. all aspects of lengthening tissues, but at the same time, we are controlling the other side, which is creating tension. So the key thing Dr. Joe just mentioned is control. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to have controlled movement through its range of motion. Okay, and, and every joint in your body works in different manners, right? You got lever joints, I mean, you got hinge joints, you got ball and socket joint. You gotta be able to just move around those joints with a controlled manner, okay? So that the, the tissues will exp um, um, lengthen and contract throughout the whole um, action, okay? And also, here's the other piece that you wanna make sure when you're thinking about mobility. So visually, you may look like you're moving through your range of motion, but sometimes, let's say on the ball and socket joint, I'm trying to move my shoulder, I can be moving my shoulder and visually I look like I'm moving it, but look, my, my actual spine is doing the, mo the motion. Yeah. Okay, versus let me get my spine to stabilize and then really work on that shoulder joint it's on its own. On the capsule. Right, on the on capsule. The capsule, right? the GH joint. Because my hand could be back here, but look, if I rotate my, sh my, my spine, my hand's still back here. So yeah. did I actually move my shoulder joint through its range of motion? It's limited. So you got to be able to move in a more, well, the other, bar, other parts of your body be in a stable manner so that you could focus on that particular joint only, okay? Now, as you move through your patterns and you create more functionality, of course, it will be more fluid, okay? But this is to isolate certain joints to make sure you get good ranges of motion in those joints and get more mobility. Out. Exactly, you're trying to lock one place while trying to move another place, yes, right? And if we know that there's a deficiency with our shoulders, sometimes it might be coming, the deficiency might be coming from our mid back, our thoracic spine. So we have to take our step-by-step -step approach in order to make sure that we get better shoulder range of motion. So I'm not just gonna go straight to my shoulder and say, I need to create range of motion with my shoulder, so therefore I'm gonna stabilize the rest of my body and just work my shoulder. What if the deficiency lies with my rotational patterns? So if you notice that there's a rotational deficiency of the spine, work the spine first, work closest to the spine first before you start to work out. Yes. outward yes. Uh, and that doesn't happen and that's not a program for every single thing <laughs> we hate to say this as chiropractors and physical therapists and and training staff but it always depends on the person yeah. and so the main thing that happens is if we need to make sure that there's a deficiency or we want to make sure that there is a deficiency that is is limiting another deficiency right, right? right. so we want to check uh, the step-by-step -step approach, which is regional interdependence is what we call it. There might be another area that could be affecting that shoulder and we want to address that area first and create mobility of there before we start creating mobility of the extremities. And so if you're not sure if your mobility is good or not, go find a professional, come over here at Shift and we'll be able to help you out with that. And we'll probably actually address some of the issues that you may be feeling when it comes to pain and also some functional patterns that you may be um, experiencing. Another big myth with mobility is that we always have to just, we have to localize an area to create mobility. And that's a pattern that we have to retrain, right? We want to retrain patterns in, a, in an aspect of full body, right? We want to get the whole body working together as a unit. So we just, I just told you re, uh, today that we want to work on a deficient area 
After though, we do want to train the pattern. Yes. We want to, your brain recognizes full body movements. Your body recognizes patterns. So if our body, if we want to solidify these movement changes, we've got to get the body to work together as a unit in these patterns. So as John said, we had to stabilize one area, create mobility there. And I said, we need to create more mobility within the spine. In your case, now, after we've created those local changes, <laughs> put it all together. we have to put it all together, yeah, right? Exactly. We have to create uh, the body to work together as a unit. Uh, last myth, does strength training inhibit mobility? No. Absolutely not. What we're trying to tell you here is that mobility is a control aspect, right? If we have resistance training to a, uh, to our movement, to our body, we can actually create mobility through strength training and resistance training. We don't necessarily have to have it be a dumbbell or a free weight or a cable. We can utilize those machines at the gym. The gym can actually allow us to create changes in the structures of our tissues. We can create a stretch response and we can create an activation response as long as we go full range of motion with these machines. Right. Try those exercises out, see if you can just go full range of motion for anything that you're trying to do. So if you're sitting at home and you're working, you're working at a desk all day long or you're, you're in your car, try to just you know, go through some range of motion with your shoulder and see how far you can take each aspect of it, right? Shoulder mobility, for example, is a ball and socket. There's a lot of different aspects that you can move. Try to move your shoulder in all different directions. Try touching your lower back. Try touching your opposite shoulder blade. Try reaching back behind your head. Try scratching your back. Try coming across the other side of the shoulder. Try bringing it all the way out. See how much mobility you can do. And we have our cameraman in the back here now starting to stretch and, and do all of their exercises. So we know we are, we are doing our due diligence and getting you guys to try to do these movements, all right? Like, subscribe, share to all your friends, see how this can help them out, and especially for those that don't move enough or are a little confused about what mobility is. All right. Thanks, you guys. Till next time.